A new initiative in Wilmington to get rid of urban blight is getting some pushback. Wilmington Mayor Perzicki is here to talk about it. This is the Delaware Way. Welcome to the Delaware Way. He is just short now of one year in office. So how is the new mayor of Wilmington doing? We're pleased to welcome Mayor Mike Perzicki back to the show. Thank you so much, Larry, sir. I appreciate you, you being here. Yep. Uh, there was an article in USA Today that really uh, jumped out at people in the area, in, in Wilmington especially, that showed that teen shootings were the highest in the country in Wilmington. I mean, we've, we've talked about the murder rate before, we've talked about other crime before. This is specifically teen shooting. Second on the list was Chicago. This is per capita. It was 3.4 per thousand in Wilmington, 1.7 in Chicago. So you're double Chicago, number one on the list. That had to be an immense concern to you. It was, of course. Uh, you know, we can look at those numbers and try to massage them and try to and try to make a better make the make them look a little bit better than they did. But uh, and I think large largely because we're such a small population that a couple of incidents and you wind up with a much higher rate. But that doesn't in any way diminish our concern for the fact that we have young people resorting to violence as a matter of course. Uh, to settle petty disputes, and that's deeply disturbing to between all of us. Between the ages of 12 and 17, they specifically Correct. said, between the ages of 12 and <clears> 17. <throat> right. and, and the article went on to say there's no mystery to this. These are people that feel like they have no hope. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Uh, I always think words matter in these discussions, and so in a sense, talking about hope suggests that there's something to hope for. I think it's a step before hope. I think it is... We have young people that don't even have aspirations. They're not even sitting around thinking about what they want to be. They're not, they're not, they don't want to be something and get frustrated they can't be that. They're just simply, they're living in a world where aspirations don't exist for them. And to me, that, what that implies is now you have a certain, there's a certain emptiness in their lives. And, uh, you know, it, when you have, when you literally have emptiness in your life, you have nothing to lose. And so, um, and one might argue, one might argue that you've got young people who think so little of themselves that any little slight, any little slight uh, is more than they can bear. And so they go back and retaliate in a way that just seems so hard for most people to imagine. And they don't, they don't trust schools or they don't, or they don't believe in the schools and they, and they don't trust government. <clears throat> and and I'm, I'm, I know I'm generalizing, yeah. but they, they don't they don't feel that they have jobs. This was all in the article. And so what do they turn to? They turn to the social structure they know. Yeah, I think that's true. I, I think it's I think that it's a terrible danger to oversimplify these mm -hmm. things. So when you say they don't trust schools, school seems irrelevant to somebody who doesn't have a career path, who doesn't understand what, what education leads to. And so it's not that they don't trust schools. They say simply don't understand the relevance of schools in their lives. Uh, we have uh, kids who are forced to learn things or are being taught things that mean nothing to them. They're abstractions to them. They have no relevance whatsoever to their lives. I want to stay on this because I think it's so important and I sure. think it's tied to, to everything in the city and as a matter of fact it's tied to things in the state because when you have an article like that mm -hmm. businesses don't want to move here. When you have an article like that it, it, it hurts just about everything. So there is there has to be a long-term solution and a short-term solution and everybody seems to talk about the long-term solution all the time. We have to improve the schools, we have to create jobs, we have to create the atmosphere, but there also has to be a short-term solution because you have kids whose lives are in jeopardy right now. Can you deal with both? Sure. In fact, I tend to be, uh, you know, my, I tend to be one of the proponents of the long-term solution. And, and, um, and at the same time, we have to turn to our police officers to provide whatever short-term solutions uh, we can. The, um, and that implies that our cops get out on the street, which they're doing, that they meet people in, in the neighborhoods, which they're doing, that uh, my police chief, probably the greatest proponent for community policing, his way, which is to go to the meetings themselves, bring their captains and the inspectors to meetings where people had never even seen uh, an officer, uh, a ranked officer, uh, show up at a meeting. And so that's one way of reaching out into the community because as the chief says, we can't do it without the community getting involved. The community knows who are the kids who've got problems. They know intimately where these difficulties are. And so if you build up trust, you're gonna build up communications. Communications are gonna help you reach out to these kids before they do something terrible. You know, I think, I think our system is overwhelmed. Uh, so at virtually every level, whether it's 
prosecutors, public defenders, defend, uh, yeah, public defenders, the courts themselves, social service agencies, they're simply overwhelmed. So I think we need, a, I think we need to uh, have a, um, a careful review of all of the, uh, the deployment of services to see what's effective. We have to prioritize them. Look, people go to, correct, go to the Department of Corrections and I would suggest not too much gets corrected. You know, we have the highest recidivism rate in the country. So obviously when people go to the Department of Corrections, uh, whatever, whatever's happening there isn't being very effective. But, uh, you know, I, if I were going to suggest, if I were going to say to you that there is one fix in a cycle of poverty and crime that exists, uh, my suggestion would be we have to focus on, on getting people to work. If we, don't, if we don't get people working, if we don't restore a healthy rhythm to neighborhoods where people go to work, take care of their families, come home tired at the end of the day, the trouble we have is we have people who are standing around on corners for an entire day, and we've got too many firearms in the streets, and that's a bad mix, because ultimately, if you stand around long enough, if you're drinking, if you're doing drugs, whatever it is you're doing, it's not very long before you're gonna get in trouble. Am I correct in saying is there's, there's a catch-22 here, though, because it's difficult for jobs to be created in a city when they no, have a crime problem? So. I, no, I don't think so. Well, I think, listen, you, I mean, you correctly stated that a reputation for crime is certainly not going to be helpful in attracting business. And, and it is an impediment for us. And we're, I think we're dealing with it reasonably well. Uh, but we have to force feed jobs in these communities. We have to create, we have to find ways to get people employed. And whatever it's going to cost the state, it's much cheaper in the long run for us to start putting resources together to get people working. Interesting you said cost the state, not cost the city. Well, I mean, it, when I say the state, I'm uh, speaking generally. I think the city's got very limited re resources. I mean, if you take a look at, if you take a look at, the city's resources, for it to go out and raise more money means to raise more taxes, means to make it less competitive with Newcastle County and even nearby uh, Pennsylvania County. So I don't think it's smart for us to say we're gonna go out and just raise money on everybody when we're trying to keep them here. So we, we have kind of a, we have limitations on what we can do. We're, by the way, our taxes aren't terribly high compared to any Pennsylvania uh, city or municipality. Certainly but not New Jersey. No. So, but compared to the rest of Delaware, our taxes are the highest. So we can't, we, we'll just be uncompetitive if we raise taxes. But I think that, you know, uh, look, the state, the state basically owns education. They own, they own our prisons. They own corrections. Uh, they own social service agencies. We have to work together, and so the reason I say we turn to the state for a lot of these things simply because that's their jurisdiction anyway. When we come back, I want to talk about your, your transition. I, I also want to talk about um, your new initiative to, to get rid of blight in the city right. and some of the pushback on that sure. when the Delaware Way continues.